Hi, and welcome back to our study of the Dhammapada. Today we continue on with verse number 62, which reads as follows. Putta mati dhanam mati iti balo vihanyati attahi atano nati kuto putta kuto danang which means Putta mati, I have sons. Dhana mati, I have wealth. Iti balo yanyati, thus the fool uh, is, worries himself or is vexed or is, is caught up, is concerned, is distraught by these thoughts. Atahi atano nati, oneself indeed is not oneself. Kuto puta kuto kuto danang. How therefore could either sons or wealth <coughs> belong to oneself? The story behind the verse, the story goes that there was this Rich man, rich man called Ananda, Ananda Sethi, and the rich man named Ananda, and uh, he taught his children, he lived his life and taught his children to not spend anything, to never give, he said, don't, don't ever give away anything, because uh, Wealth is difficult to gain, it's hard to, hard to hold on to, and it can, can vanish at any time, so you have to work very, very hard to keep it, and keep every coin uh, accounted for. And uh, so, over his years of cultivating wealth and obsessing over wealth, he came to view it as something that uh, needed protecting. He got so wound up that he thought so every coin should be accounted for and should never give anything to anyone. So never give away or, or foolishly spend uh, your wealth. Reminds us of the, the rich man with the pancakes, but no, this is a different man. It seems to be that wealth, uh, there's a uh, there's a common theme in the Pali Canon of rich, richness often leading to miserliness, which of course you see in real in modern modern day as well. But though there are some examples of rich people who are very generous and kind. There are many rich people who can only think about how they can amass more wealth. They can get more and more. So, so the Buddha said, for this reason. Uh, even a, even if it were to rain gold, you would never get never get enough for even one person. So this is the story of Ananda, and <clears throat> not much of a story because he passed away and left his fortune to his son. And the story is actually about his reincarnation. When he was reborn, he was reborn as an outcast in a village of it says around a thousand outcast uh, beggars or, 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 or uh, um, well, poor, uh, unemployed uh, outcasts who were unable, of course, to get any but the worst of jobs and had to live either off begging or off, off slavery and slave labor, etc. Now, from the moment that he was conceived in his mother's womb, the entire village was unable to uh, to, to get at anything, to, to make even the slightest bit of money or, or food. They, were, they weren't able to beg, they weren't able to work. From the moment that he was conceived, it, he cursed the whole village. And so the, story, sto so the story goes. Some kind of group karma at work, I guess. And so... Uh, they split the village. What they, they got together and they said something must something must be wrong here. Someone must be causing this. And so they split the village in half. 
and uh, had them go, se go in separate locations and, and go begging or go working or whatever. And they found that one half was able to get um, to, to get by fine as per normal. The other group still was, as it were, cursed. And so they cut that group in half and then cut you know, the, the, the other group, group in half and in half again until they got down to two families and they split them up and they found that this woman with this pregnant woman was the cause of all the problems. So they kicked them out and sent them on their way. And then he was then he when he was born, his parents felt found the same thing that if they went on alms alone or if they went out working or whatever alone, then they could get money just fine and they they could get by as 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 well as could be expected, but if he was with them, they would all get nothing. So they kicked him out as well, and gave him a little piece of, maybe a, a piece of pot or something, and said, "Go, you must, uh, you must fare for yourself." They kept him around until he was like seven years old, and they sent him off. You must go by yourself. Uh, the other thing is, he was very, very ugly, so he kind of looked like an ogre. And this is the horrible uh, repercussions of being such a miser. And one day he was, he was wandering around trying to get whatever alms he could, which of course wasn't much. He wandered, wandered back to his old home and he saw this house and he recognized it and so he just walked right in. And he started looking around the house, not quite sure why he was there, but it looked, seeing that it looked very familiar and kind of like home. And, so he was walking around, and he went into one room, and there were the, his grandchildren, his son's sons, and uh, they freaked out, and they called out, and they said, Monster, there's a monster in here. And the servants came over and beat him and threw him out, uh, just as the Buddha was walking by. And so the Buddha's walking by, going on alms round, and he sees this young beggar beaten to a pulp, or beaten quite, quite severely, lying on the side of the road, not to a pulp, he's still alive. He beats him up, he's beaten up, and the, the Buddha looks at him, and then he looks at Ananda, who is our Ananda, not the, the rich Ananda, walking beside him, he turns to look at Ananda, and Ananda knows to take this as a, as a, um, instigation, or to, 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 uh, to ask a question. So he asks the, he asks the Buddha, what, What's the story of this guy, Reverend Sir? And the Buddha said he used to be the, the, the great rich man Ananda, and this was his house, and this is where he lived. And Ananda, so Ananda called the rich man's son, and uh, the Buddha explained to him, this, is, this was your father. And he said, I don't believe it, looks at him, and he's this ugly outcast, and he said, how can he go from a rich man to a a beggar and the Buddha had him go in the house and find out all his find all his treasures, and the kid was able to actually remember where everything was, and so he proved it. And then the Buddha taught this verse. So, simple story, and uh, the the point here is to remind us not to be negligent. It's a simple lesson. When we think of material possessions, all of those things, not just putta and dana, would it? our sons and our wealth, but, but everything. We look at all of our belongings, all, all of our um, enjoyments in the material realm, thinking of them as, as me, as mine, as somehow controllable. So we either hold on to them as ours to enjoy, or we hold on to them as ours to control, or ours to own, or ours to dwell in. Our body, we think of it as ourselves. Our house, we think of it as ourselves. Our car, our bedrooms, everything. All of our family, we think of them as our family. All of our friends, we think of them as our friends. And so we we get caught up in this um, habit of, or expectation of being able to control, of being able to rely upon, of being able to enjoy all of these things. And the Buddha said, even yourself is not yourself. Atahi atano nati. It's funny, the more common one that people know is atahi atano nato, which is 
So you wonder whether one of them is actually a, or the other one is actually a, a well, anyway, the Buddha taught both ways. Atahiya to know not to self is a refuge of self, which means one is one's own refuge. But that's referring to the four satipatthana. One makes a refuge by practicing on one's own, not relying on anyone else. But even that one can't control. One can't uh, rely upon one's expectations. One can't be fulfilled in one's desires and in one's demands. And so, as a result, iti balo yanyati, a fool is vexed by these thoughts. They think of their children and their loved ones and all of the the people in their life as being controllable and then when they're, un they're not able to control these things, control these people, then they suffer. They're vexed. They're worried all the time. Worried about how they might be and trying to figure out ways to control people, ways to control their family, ways to control their friends, ways to control their employers, their employees, their co-workers, and so on and so on. How can I control people to be the way I want them to be? And the same goes with our dana, our, our possessions, our wealth, all of our belongings, guarding our houses, guarding our valuables, guarding our possessions, guarding our enjoyments, even guarding our own bodies, being, care, being careful to make sure that we can always enjoy the pleasure that we enjoy now. But none of this can be controlled, and when it isn't, when it's out of our control, we we're vexed by it, especially foolish people who who really believe that these things are going to make them happy. People who believe in the world bringing happiness wind up being vexed quite often, and uh, because of their lack of wisdom, they're not able to see this, and so as a result, they are constantly vexed as they do it again and again and again, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, not for forgetting that they are constantly upset. So the Buddha reminds us, even ourselves is not, even ourself is not ourself. Even, what this means is, we can't even control ourselves. We can make choices, we can have intentions, but we can't really control it. We can't say, I'm going to be happy all the time, or I'm going to be calm all the time. We can't say that we're never going to feel pain, or we're not going to get angry, or we're not going to get upset. We can't say this even about our own minds, even about our own being. So how then could we possibly do this? How then could we possibly hold on to these things? How then could we expect that we're going to um, enjoy the possession of these things forever? How could we possibly forget that we're going to lose them all when we die? And so this is what Ananda, Ananda Seti, this guy, didn't realize. And really the, 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 the most impressive part of this story is how quickly he was gone. This is what shocked his son. He was unable to believe that, just like that, in one moment, the moment of death turned him from a rich, powerful, uh, influential person to a nobody, to the, the lowest of the low, an outcast of the outcasts. And... Uh, but that's the truth. That's what the Buddha means by it's not self. You can't even hold on to your own being, your own status. I think I'm a monk. The moment I die, that's gone. You think you're a human being. The moment you die, that's gone. You could be, the next moment you could be an earthworm or a dung beetle. Everything that we collect, everything that we hold on to, no, no security for us. All these people, in some cultures, they will bury their belongings with them thinking that they can bring it into their next life, or they'll burn certain objects. In Thailand and China, they burn these uh, really crappy houses and, and fake stuff and everything, and you think, well, then they're going to get a lot of fake stuff when they go to heaven. The idea is that they can take that stuff with them if they burn it. And since it's all garbage, you think, well, it's not really... Even if it did work, and of course it doesn't work. You can't, you can't possess... We don't possess anything. We just happen to be going in the same direction as all this stuff. We happen to be in the same physical loca locale, right? 
we manage to make choices that bring all this stuff near us and that's it. We can't do any better than that. We can't control. Even our enjoyment is fleeting and ephemeral, something that uh, cannot be relied upon. So it's very much uh, out of our control based on causes and conditions that are far more powerful than any one of us. So, a reminder for us, and in regards to meditation, a reminder for us to keep our minds clear and to be clear about all the things that we use. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't be using our possessions. It doesn't mean we shouldn't um, we shouldn't live. But it means that when we do experience even pleasure or, or, or the... Um, when you're eating food, the pleasure of the eat of the food, when you're seeing beautiful things, the pleasure that comes from that. But we should see it simply as a feeling. And we should see the experience simply as an experience. The experience is seeing, the hearing, smelling, tasting, feeling, thinking. And see liking as liking, see disliking as disliking. And come to see that these things are not self, are not under our control. Try to keep our minds clear. Because all of this will catch, catch you when you die. And if you have great wanting, so someone who is very, very rich because they've cl they're clinging so much, what goes with them is the clinging. And that's why you're born very, very poor. If you were very, very, That's why rich people are very quick to be born very poor because they have so much greed and attachment. And it's that want that goes with you. So you're born wanting. You're born in a constant state of want. Amassing wealth doesn't make you wealthy. Being generous and kind and uh, having a mind of surplus. When you think you have surplus, when you're content with what you have, then you'll always be content. You'll never know the words nutty. When you want something, you'll never be discontent. You'll never know discontent because your mind is content. It's funny how it works that way. The mind that is clinging is the mind that is corrupt. And clinging to self is the worst type of corruption because it leads to all other likes and dislikes. So we have to keep our minds clear. This is why meditation is important. When we live our lives, however you live your lives, to keep your minds clear and to not cling to self either in regards to your own self or in regards to the things that you enjoy. So a nice lesson from the Dhammapada and from our friend, the former Ananda Sethi. Hope he managed to find his way out of that mess. So thank you all for tuning in and uh, I wish you all peace, happiness and freedom from suffering and see you next time.